What's up guys, Bobby here from Wedding Cinema University to talk about a super important topic, something that is so often overlooked in wedding films, especially when you're just starting out, and that is how to get good audio. Now I definitely want to keep this video brief, so if you have any questions or want me to go into detail on anything, just leave a comment below. I thought the best way to go over this audio would be to divide it up into three categories, which is three times throughout the day that I think capturing audio is incredibly important. And those three are going to be prep. Um, so Julia and I got you guys these, and uh, it's kind of funny the way that you have to hold them. That's as much as I'm going to say. Got <laughs> so I'll be done with this by probably tomorrow. <laughs> There's another box inside. Oh wow. Ceremony. Well, Jackie and Josh, you made it. And so enjoyed our times together, our many meetings, getting to know the two of you better, having a first-hand view of the strength and the health of your relationship. In the reception. A little more than a year ago, Josh called to see if I'd be home one day during the week because he had something to pick up for Jackie at our house. When all of a sudden, maybe 20 minutes later, I heard Josh's truck coming down the street. And I knew at that moment, the time had come. And I could see this little boy inside this grown man starting to tear up. And during prep, most of the audio that you're gonna get is ambient audio. And the best way to capture that is to record on something like this, the Rode VideoMic Pro, or some kind of on-camera microphone. Now, of course, you can use the built-in mics on your camera, but something like the Rode VideoMic Pro is gonna give you better quality and be able to kind of silence some of the surrounding noise as you key in on something specific. Now, the great thing with ambient audio is that it really sets the mood and it gives your viewer kind of an in to the environment. It keeps them attached and engaged in that environment with what they're seeing. So for example, during wedding prep, if the girls are getting ready and you see a hairdryer, you could have a subtle hairdryer sound. Similarly, throughout the day, if there's cars or a waterfall that they're at or anything like that that you see that could help to really kind of keep the viewer engaged and in that environment, that's what ambient audio is for. Now you could also use this to capture laughter or maybe a funny conversation, but this is stuff that just kind of happens. It's not really something that you can plan for. Now category two is the ceremony, but before we get there, some weddings do a first look. Now whether that's between the bride and the groom or the bride and her father or both, this can be a key place to get awesome audio. Now the on-camera mic, I'd definitely run it if you have it because it's always nice to have better audio, but that's not gonna be the best source for something like this. For something like this, you're actually gonna wanna mic people up individually. Miking a bride up is pretty hard. I wouldn't usually recommend doing it, but it's a great time to mic up a groom or the father if the first look is with the father or anybody that the bride is gonna do a first look with. In order to mic them up, I would recommend using something like the Zoom H1 with a lavalier mic or the Tascam DR10L, which is what we're currently recording on and is a great option that we're just transitioning over to. Using these in conjunction with a lav mic is gonna get you nice quality audio of any voices or anything that's said, which is super important. This isn't gonna be necessarily something that you can build the story around, but having the first words that the groom says to his bride when he sees her for the first time can be a super emotional piece of audio and can really create an emotional connection with the viewer. Now moving into the ceremony, there are two different kinds of audio, two different ways to get audio that we usually use. The first one, and possibly the most important, is your main audio recorder. This is the Tascam DR40. We've also used a Zoom H4, H4n, I believe they're on the H5 or H6 even now. And this is gonna be what you get a feed from the DJ or from a soundboard, from the venue, something like that. So you're gonna use commonly an XLR input, although this can take quarter inch. You can also run an RCA to a quarter inch adapter. There's definitely a variety of different inputs you can take, but if you can get an XLR, that's what I would always recommend. And like I said, this is gonna come straight from the venue, straight from the soundboard, something like that. And this is gonna be any audio that goes to that system will get fed into here. Now this is super important audio because this is generally what you're gonna build the story around. You are often gonna use some piece of the ceremony that the officiant gives or something like that. So the upside, of course, is that this is very much the meat of your story, or at least a part of it. 
The downside with this specific setup is that you are reliant on somebody else. Like I said, this is coming from a DJ soundboard or the venue. So it depends on the quality of their audio. It depends on their knowledge and how they're set up. And you also need to make sure you can even get a feed, a main output from their system, which isn't always the case. Also pro tip real quick, we love the Tascam DR40. We switched to this from the Zoom H4n and the two huge things that sold us on this were the ability to take a mic and a line level. That's huge, you never know what you're gonna get from a DJ. And the Zoom H4n didn't allow that. The newer versions might, I'm not sure, but that was a big reason for switching. Another great thing with the Tascam DR40 as well as the Tascam DR10L, which we'll do a separate video on soon, is that they can both record dual tracks. So what that means is you can set your initial point of where you want the audio as far as the audio levels, and it will record a track at that level, and it will also record another track at a lower decibel level. So if that happens to peak or clip, if somebody yells into the mic and it's a little bit too loud, you'll also have a secondary track to fall back on. So that brings us to our next kind of audio during the ceremony. I'm gonna bring these guys right back up because we love using these personal recorders during the ceremony. We put one on the officiant, we put one on the groom, and we'll also put one on a podium or an extra mic. Now that can be with a lab, which we always put for the officiant and the groom, but if we do mic up a musician or a podium or an extra mic, it might be just taping one of these to the mic or something like that. Any way that we can get as many sources of audio as possible to guarantee we get the best quality. These are gonna capture great audio, just like that main audio source, but the upside is that you are only relying on your own knowledge and your own equipment, and I can always guarantee that these are gonna get me nice clean speeches, nice clean vows, and a nice clean sermon. Now moving into the third category of audio for the day, and that is at the reception. Now the reception actually works very similarly in our eyes to the ceremony. You wanna get good audio of especially the toasts, among other things, welcome prayers and things like that, but you also are gonna be depending on somebody else's system. So the setup is actually pretty similar. We use the Tascam DR40 in order to take an XLR feed from the DJ or the venue or wherever the mic and the toast are gonna to go through. And then we also use something like the Zoom H1 or the Tascam DR10L to mic up individual toasters or similarly to the ceremony, if there's just a free floating mic, we'll tape a microphone on there with gaff tape in order to make sure we have at least two sources of high quality audio. Now this toast audio is also super important, just like the ceremony audio, because this is again gonna be the meat of your story. This is what you build it around. This is going to be the funny stories from when these two first met or how they met or some funny thing in their relationship or how he proposed. Basically, it's the best way to get a unique story to really tailor the video to the couple. And that's why we love this audio and think it's so important. In the ceremony and reception, we aren't filming as much ambient audio. Of course, we are running the on-camera road microphone when we can, but that's not generally what we're after in those times of the day. So I know that was definitely brief, definitely a quick overview. I hope it was helpful. Like I said, if you have any questions or want me to go into detail on anything, feel free to comment below. I'd be happy to do so. And as always, I'd love for you to like this video and subscribe. Follow along with Wedding Cinema University as we create more videos to help you expand your craft and your business. Thanks.